Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan and this is Tyler Kelly. And we are coming to you from Matthew chapter 8 this morning, verses 16 and 17. Tyler, if you don't mind. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. All right. So what we have going on here, we've seen Jesus heal a leper and cleanse him. We've seen him heal across time and space with the centurion's servant uh, by speaking a word in one location and it being effective. Technically in a place Jesus had not been, had not seen, etc. That there was no physical contact, there was only that which was spoken. Um, then we have also Peter's mother-in-law was healed and uh, Jesus rebuked the fever, took her hand, raised her up off of the bed of, of that fever. And we know that it wasn't just a little 99 degree fever. They were genuinely worried that this fever was going to kill her. And, uh, and so we, we see where we were with verses 1 through 4 in chapter 8. People say, well, does God really, you know, is God really willing? And Jesus looks at the leper and says, I will. Be cleansed. Not that big a deal. Um, but at some point we got into our head that God's goal for the Christian life is uh, for it to be nothing but pain and suffering. Um, but... Isaiah 53, it's quoted right here in verses 16 and 17. He himself bore our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. If you go back and you read Isaiah 53, part of everything that Jesus carried to the cross was everything of the curse of Adam's sin on humanity. And... Uh, you know, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word. word. And he healed all who were sick. Not everybody who was brought to him was physically sick. Some of them were just demon-possessed. Not all demon possession resulted in sickness. Not all sickness was demon possession. Um, but why did he do it? So it would be fulfilled. That which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses. Part of the purpose of the life and mission of Jesus is to undo, undo the curse of Adam's sin. Not just in the world to come, but in this world. And uh, to those of you who say to me, well, Brother Brian... Um, Jesus just did all of this to prove that he was the Son of God. Do you remember his confrontation with the devil, Tyler? Yes. What did he, what did the devil say to him each time? Scripture says at least. No, no, no. no. no each time. I know you love these trick questions out of nowhere that aren't trick questions. Put back over to Matthew chapter 4 for just a moment. Do this and? No. Look at it with me here. <clears throat> Verse 3. The tempter came to him and said, uh, If you are the Son of God. All right. Now skip down to verse 6. And the tempter said to him, If you are the Son of God. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, when we move into 8 then he says to him if you'll fall down and worship me but notice the first two Jesus didn't have to do miracles to prove who he was not to devils not to anyone he did what he did because it was the Father's will and because it was the fulfillment of the Father's word in times past. 
And he said, well, does that apply to us today? Third John 2, Tyler, I know we know this one. I'm going to let you read it. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Pray that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You say, well, see, brother, the soul is more important. Uh-huh. So get your soul prospering so that you can get your prosperity prospering so that you can get your health prospering. Mm -hmm. Or do we honestly believe that the only people that God wants healthy and well are super powerful children of the devil like Bill Gates? Just saying. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we bid you good day. And Lord willing, we'll see you back about 1230.